Hello and welcome to Victor George Leather Goods YouTube and volume 12. Before I actually get started and talk to you about the sheath we're going to build today, I just wanted to uh, tell you that uh, I've been out of pocket for about four weeks now, three, four weeks. Uh, life got in the way, had a family emergency we had to take care of. So uh, we're back in the shop. I'm good. And uh, let's go ahead and get started with today's presentation. And today what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how I make an angle option carry knife sheath for any style of knife sheath that you make. This is one of my popular um, classic pouch sheaths. And I just adapted a um, belt slot carrier for it. And it can carry this vertical, angled, horizontal, any way you want. I'm going to show you how to do this. So let's go ahead and get started and uh, let's do it. All right, this angle carry option sheath and uh, slot face are what we're gonna build today. This gives you the option of carrying the sheath, whether it be a pouch sheath or a scabbard sheath. Uh, I'm gonna show you using T-nuts, how we attach it to the back plate. And uh, you can carry this thing 45 degrees vertical, any cap that you want. I will show you how it's done. And in this particular case, it is mounted as such. Very versatile, uses T-nuts. I will demonstrate how that is done, but for the sake of a quick demo, whoop, lefty Lucy. These are standard Chicago screws, three eighths of an inch long. And uh, instead of a back flap, we're going to incorporate these two T-nuts. Um, this is the back panel. I have yet to line it and sew it. I will do that for the video. I just wanted to get this started. And um, again, depending on where you put your holes, they're two and a half inches apart. I'll show you that in the pattern process for this. Um, will give you dozens of options. You can carry this however you want. I recommend that you take the pouch sheath design of your choosing. They're all basic classic standard sheaths like this. And uh, you can go back into my different volumes of Knife Sheath School. I'll list them here on the screen for you to show you which ones uh, will work for this. And uh, let's go ahead and show you how this is done. All right. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how I pattern this back piece. There really isn't anything to it. It's basically a rectangle. Um, and uh, But I will quickly show you how I do it and what I use. All right, let's get started. Okay, so let me show you how I build this back slotted panel for this style of uh, sheath carry. And uh, again, taking your favorite uh, standard taco sheath or a scabbard sheath. Um, and then with your T-nuts attached on the back instead of the flap. And in this particular case, the customer only wanted to carry it 12 o'clock and then a 45 degree angle for a left hip cross draw. All right, of course you can do the entire clock. And the first thing that I do to make this happen is I go and I get these three and a quarter inch uh, leather coasters from Tandy or Springfield Leather. And uh, I think they're a little small for a coaster, but uh, uh, I use them for practice pieces. And uh, in this case, I incorporated it for this particular build. So the first thing I do is I establish my center hole and then the holes around the clock, depending on how you want to carry it. Obviously that would be vertical, that would be horizontal. These would be at an angle carry. So once I establish this, I take a piece of cardstock and establish a uh, cross graph on my paper. I will take this and I will center it onto the paper. The 12 o'clock and six o'clock holes match up and so do the three and the nine o'clock holes as well as the center holes. Now I just take my pen, and this may seem a little unorthodox, but it works for me. And in this case, we're going to do a vertical carry. And an 
angle carry at that configuration. And let's throw in a scout carry, completely horizontal. All right, now once we establish that, and these um, circle indicators or, or uh, punch indicators are three eighths of an inch from the edge of this three and a quarter inch leather coaster. All right, once I have that established, then all I'm gonna do is square up the circle. And um, the way I do that is just like this. Again, using my graph ruler and keeping all my horizontal and vertical lines as true as I can get them. I will just square off the circle. I'll do that here as well. Okay. And just always for symmetry, just keep all these uh, these lines true. And now that's right up along the edge of this three and a quarter inch circle. Now I am going to um, take uh, my one and a half inch slot punch and uh, I will be right back with it. And I will punch myself two slots right at the edge of this circle. Okay, I was a little rusty, so um, I did this off camera because I forgot to bring the tools with me, but it's nothing more than using your one and a half inch slot punch um, directly on the edge of the circle. Uh, I punched out my holes. These are all two and a half inches across from center to center. All right, so these are gonna give me vertical, horizontal, and 45 degree angle carry. Once I have this um, established, then I will take my ruler and from the edge, the outside edge of the slot, I will go one half inch. And again, all your lines. And I will just connect that part. And one half inch from the outside edge of this slot. All right, so that's my rectangle with the holes for the angle. Now I'm gonna take a craft tool corner, whatever size you wanna use, and then I will just punch in some corners here. And then on the bottom side, I'm gonna do the same thing. And then on the front, I'm just gonna angle it like I did on this one. I like the angle look instead of all rounded corners. And um, again, you can do this by measurement. I am going to just give myself some angles. And now just cut out your pattern. And just split that ink line. There it is. And that is your back panel piece. It's that simple. I've probably made it uh, more complicated than it needs to be, but um, the way my brain works, that's how it works for me. So this is the back panel. Now, get yourself the pattern of your choice for your pouch sheath. And um, on my next clip, I'm gonna go ahead and build this in front of you and you can get an idea of how I do all these steps. Okay, a very simple project. I uh, wanted to start off different yet simple. So let's go ahead and break and get our supplies ready for our build. So we went ahead and did some preliminary steps. 
Again, after uh, volume 12, I'm assuming that you have some basic uh, leather craft skills. So we took our patterns that we had drawn and take your favorite uh, pattern for a fold over or a scabbard uh, type sheath and cut them out to leather. So all you really need for the pouch sheath is the pattern itself cut to leather, a good firm eight to nine ounce veg tan, a welt according to the knife you're gonna carry and um, that's pretty much it. I went ahead and established my stitch line. Um, it's a half inch welt, so a quarter inch from the edge. I used a five millimeter um, spacing pricking iron and uh, set that up for final assembly. Also, if you'll notice on the back of the sheath where the belt loop would normally go, I took and just marked a two and a half inches um, in the center of the back of the panel. That is going to be for our T-nuts. All right, so once you have that cut, then I take good firm eight ounce uh, veg tan as well, and I'll punch myself some holes. I happen to have a one inch uh, round punch and um, a T-nut that I use are a quarter inch shaft the thread is 8 30 seconds, which is the same size as the Chicago screws. And um, that's what we're going to use. So I went ahead and made one up. And all it is is you take your T-nut and you set it in the center of the round. And you crimp the um, flanges so that they stay in there permanently. I establish a border about an eighth of an inch in and using a four mil um, stitching pricking iron, I went ahead and established my stitching line. And the way I do that is once I cut the leather out from the, the scrap, I'll take a one inch washer and I'll set it in the center. And uh, the reason for that washer is it gives me the exact center that I need. And of course, I don't have my pen here, but we will just mark that hole. All right, once you have that hole um, established, we're gonna go ahead and punch it out in the center mark. And establish your 1 8 inch stitch line all the way around, of course, I use my four mil and you work your way around the perimeter like that. Okay, now you take this uh, T-nut and you bring it in through the back. And um, let me show you how I, I do that. I have this piece of scrap leather that I punch a center hole in I place this over the hole. I take it to my uh, one and a half ton press and I press the T-nut in. And then I take this homemade tool that I set on a piece of um, anvil, piece of steel. I just set that. Um, these are available at edcleather.com. Um, um, George Canfield has these available on, in stock and they're a great tool to have to uh, set your T-nuts. Oh, or of course you can make one yourself, but it's a lot easier just to buy one through him. All right, and once you have that, this is what it's gonna look like. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna look through that T-nut hole and we're gonna mark, we're gonna place it over that hole and then we're going to uh, mark our holes and glue and sew both of these on and then you'll have them in this configuration of course before you sew up the main seam on your sheath. All right let's now look at the back panel that we cut out and I feel like I'm a little bit choppy but uh, haven't done this for a while. Okay so I cut out my back piece 
I uh, punched out the holes based on the pattern that I want to use and uh, cut out my slots. And now all I'm going to do is I'm gonna glue it to this back piece. So this is um, probably seven, eight, nine ounce veg tan leather. The um, back piece is I think three, four ounce leather. You want that back piece pretty firm. So I'm gonna go ahead and glue that onto the back piece um, and then establish a stitch line all the way around this. Sew it together and uh, then we'll be ready for final assembly. I'm gonna go ahead and also take my sheath pattern, uh, glue in the welt. And uh, once I glue in the welt, then I can glue both sides in, fold it together and either um, all punch or Dremel drill press out your holes. Of course, if you have a sewing machine, there you go. All right, let's do that and get back to it. Let's go ahead and uh, do a quick overview on what we've done so far. I went ahead and set the liner with stitching and this is a good now eight to 10 ounce back panel. Um, you want it a little bit stiff. So that is all done. I went ahead and edged it. Don't forget to burnish, dye, and do all the decorative things that you need to do. My, <clears throat> excuse me, my uh, T-nut panels are sewn in place. Um, I went ahead and uh, sewed, sewed them. I will say that if you dampen the leather first, um, you don't need to cut a groove. I, I, I'm not a groove guy, and uh, you can if you like but they are subsurface. You're not gonna have any problem. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, but they are subsurface. And then of course, after you stitch them, you hammer them flat. I put the screws in place just to protect the threads. And uh, remember, you always want to make sure that you sand, burnish, um, put your geometric pattern, do all the stuff that you would normally do to dress this up. This is uh, sort of uh, fast and furious for the video. Again, this is a utilitarian style of knife sheath. Um, it's not meant to be pretty, it's meant to be used hard. And by the time we get this all together with our Loctite, which will be in the next clip, we're gonna do it. All right, so now I'm gonna glue the welt in place. And on both sides, I'm gonna close up the main seam sew it together and uh, we'll be ready to put this thing together and get it to use. All right, thank you. All right, so we are finished with all the sewing. Um, I did a video um, effort <laughs> um, work on this. Of course, make sure you do everything to the best of your ability. All right, let's go ahead and put this together. Let's get our blue Loctite. And uh, I've had one of these out in the field here in Ajo uh, since January of 2021. Absolutely no issues whatsoever. So we're gonna go ahead and take out the screws. Guess I should have had this done ahead of time. little Loctite in there. You can use fingernail polish if you like. Let's go ahead and put this one at our 45 degree. I'm just gonna push that thing on. And set that in there. So because we have those uh, T-nuts in there, we can literally crank this thing to absolute tightness. Ok, 
이렇게 All right. There we go. Any angle you want. I hope you enjoyed this build. It was sort of a, a fast and um, quickie just to get me back to the video game here. I do have some exciting things planned, so stay tuned. Again, angle, vertical, um, scout carry, however you want. I hope you enjoyed this video, and uh, if you have any questions, please feel free, and uh, please check out my conclusion video, and uh, that's it. All right, everybody, I hope you enjoyed this build. Uh, again, this is a utilitarian pouch sheath, uh, worn cross draw uh, for a righty. You can reverse it, obviously, for a lefty. I love these little projects, and I hope you enjoyed the uniqueness of this. I do try to make something a little bit different every single time. I have some uh, wonderful ideas planned. Um, I've got a fun sheath next. So here, if you have watched to the very end and you leave a comment after the first thousand people um, view the video, uh, hopefully that'll take a little over 48 hours. Um, I will randomly select somebody and I'll send you these templates that I use in my design process. So all you got to do, watch the video completely and leave a comment. I'll reach out to a random person, get your address, and I'll send them to you. Doesn't matter where you live. All right. Thank you very much again. I'm glad to be back, and uh, we will talk to you on the next one. Thank you.